what I try to do now is to show to all men out there, regardless of what your background is, where you're from, we've got to normalize um, men being vulnerable. You know, it's, it's perfectly okay for men to be in that safe space and for other men to hold that safe space for them, you know? Um, so that's, that's the main message that I try to get across. Where I grew up in South Africa, it's a very harsh country where now I'm, I'm 47 now. So in my, in my era, going to school in the eighties and nineties, um, boys showing emotional vulnerability was really bullied. So in that sense, I, I got really bullied in that sort of, that sort of way. So I was, when I was, uh, there, there was always a lot of jealousy, uh, uh, projected onto me as well. And also I found out at the young age of, uh, my grandmother told me when I was about eight, nine, that my dad wasn't my biological father, basically. Um, so that was a massive shock for me. So I closed off towards, um, my mum in a sense where there was a big emotional trauma for me that I didn't heal up until literally only about maybe seven years ago. Um, and that healing process took me a good five years. So that video that you saw that I was a broken man was literally um, <clears throat> where I sort of came to, that, that was the beginning of lockdown actually in 2020 where I literally lost everything. So that, I mean, I can elaborate on that if, if you want and go, go into detail on, on what, what happened there and, and what sort of brought me to that, that point in my life. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's basically, uh, and also what I, what I try to do now is to show to all men out there, regardless of what your background is, where you're from, you know, we've got to normalize, sorry, let me just turn that off, We've got to normalize um, men being vulnerable. You know, it's it's perfectly okay for men to be in that safe space and for other men to hold that safe space for them, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's the main message that I try to get across with all my social media platforms that I've got, TikTok and, and Instagram. Um, TikTok's my main platform that I, that I post on. Um, and I, I sort of gradually started going into Insta I mean, I've always had Instagram, but Instagram only kicked off really um, once I've linked that to my TikTok. Um, and I've had a lot of people from there starting to follow me. And then also that same video that you saw, saw on Mel Robbins, Jay Shetty actually shared that twice. Um, so, yeah, that's that's really that sort of threw me into the Instagram limelight, as you, if you want to call it that. Amazing. So why do you think people enjoy following you now? That message is so clear and it's so helpful and valuable to so many people in the world, but why do you think people enjoy following you? You know, I, I think it's, um, I think it's the authenticity that I bring towards the camera. You know, it's not, I mean, you can, you can read all these quotes online, but if you've got someone that actually is vulnerable and authentic delivering that to camera, like they are talking directly to you, I think that's got a much bigger impact on the individual, whether it's just one person I help out there to bring them out of the gutter or to just give them that little bit of a boost for that day. You know, that's my job done. And that's, that's all I've always wanted to achieve. It's just to sort of help. It doesn't have to just be men. It can be women. It can be children, you know, all, all kinds out there, but just to sort of bring that up. But like I say, I think it's that authenticity that, that shines through, um, that comes from a place of love that comes from a place of realness. Um, it's not fake, you know, this, you can see there's a lot of people out there who's trying and you can, you can sort of see through that if you know what I mean. Absolutely. Um, and, and I think that's a big difference in, in the message that I, that I try to bring across to people out there. Yeah. So one thing that stuck out to me when I came across your page, and I think it was either Mel Robbins or Jay Shetty. I, I honestly, I think it was Jay Shetty that shared it, that how I ended up on your page and how we're sitting here in front of each other right now um, was, was uh -huh. your Instagram handle, man from somewhere. And I'm like, oh, that, you know, that, that is really interesting. So explain that. Like, how did you come up with that Instagram handle and what does that mean to you? So what, so I'm, I'm originally from South Africa. 
I, I grew up there and uh, I came over to the UK at the young age of 23. So I came over here to, um, to come and play rugby, professional rugby. That, that was uh, what I wanted to do. So I, I had a seven-year career that I, in South Africa because rugby only turned professional in '95. And I came over in 1997. So in South Africa, I played a little bit. Uh, and then I, um, I had a contract with a semi-professional club over here uh, for three years. Um, and that's the main reason that I came over. So, And then I, I lived down in the south of England. And then I moved up, like I say, the beginning of lockdown to, to Scotland. And as I grew up on, in a sort of farm environment in South Africa, I, I always liked to be outdoors. And um, I mean, Mother Nature is for me the biggest healing element that that is out there. You know, you can go and hug a tree, you can go and swim in cold water. You know, all of that has got healing properties um, and the same frequencies and energies that that we basically want in our lives and we can get all of that from nature so that's what i enjoy that so also in the, so in the last two years for me as i've discovered scotland during the, the lockdown period i found myself everywhere all over scotland you know and uh, i literally just thought well i am somewhere in the world at some stage <laughs> um so and that was just like that, that just stuck you know and that, that's why i sort of came up with a man from somewhere right very cool very cool so obviously you enjoy traveling and things like that what has been the most incredible travel experience you've ever had or what was something that was really challenging for you that you overcame uh on your travels so the biggest thing for me basically was during part of my i mean i'm very fortunate because i'm i, I do commercial modeling and acting I have been very fortunate to to travel the world with work um, and uh, I actually went on a Dr. Joe Dispenza retreat in Cancun. You yeah, went, went on, on a, a Joe long... Dispenza retreat? Uh, yeah, I went on a week-long retreat, mate. Yeah, it was that. Uh, for me, that was probably the biggest life-changing uh, week in my in my whole life. Please tell me more. Yeah, you know what? It was it was part of my. It was actually so I, I've I've been divorced twice now, and uh, it was through my second divorce that I basically got introduced to him uh, through a therapist, and uh, she was saying to me, "Listen, if you if you really want to progress, read this book." Um, and I was to break uh, break in the habit of being yourself. Mm -hmm. So I read that book, and then I came to Scotland actually on a three day retreat first. And uh, that was in Edinburgh, and I did that for the three days, and I was just like, Do you know what, I've got to go on this week-long retreat. So I, then I went to Mexico for this uh, week-long retreat, oh, and um, do you know, it was, like I say, it, it was absolutely life-changing for me, because not only did I, because I, I was literally at that stage in my life where you know, I had to literally just go, do you know what, fuck it, everything, I've got to just let go. I have got to just let go, you know, there's no control because as as men you know we like to be in control and it's, it's a very hard step for me to sort of just go do you know I'm, I'm giving over and um it was in that week that i actually i think it was on day two or day three that i literally just went I, i'm just gonna have to go with this you know I, I can't i can't control this it's it's just gonna it's out of my control now and um it was yeah like i say it was life changing and one of the one of the biggest moments for me actually was during the one of the walking meditations because you do four or five different types of meditations with dr joe like you do the sitting one standing one uh you do a walking meditation um lying down one where you literally and you, you sort of drift in and out of consciousness it's it's amazing but in the in the uh, walking meditation it's like you start really early in the morning and you basically go into sunrise on this beach and as you walk down on the beach there's literally like over a thousand people on this beach meditating together so the energy in in that in that whole week is just oh it's phenomenal you, you can literally feel it you know you, you it's just it's absolutely crazy oh. so in that in that walking meditation what dr joe does is he he's part of the meditation group so you've got your headphones on and you listen to him um as he guides you through this meditation and then in the end of the meditation you literally go and lie down on the sand um and you open up and you just receive 
And uh, what he does is he looks at people whilst he's there, not to sort of spy or anything, but that's just part of what he does. And if he sees someone that is literally connected to the the field and he's in that moment, he will come and open up his heart and basically provide his energy for you as well as a support. And... Uh, yeah, it was during during that that he literally stood behind me, and uh, I didn't know this. It was literally after the the, the meditation when I opened my eyes because uh, I, I went to breakfast, and this woman was like, "Oh my God, what was it like?" Because Doctor Joe stood behind you for like twenty minutes, um, and I was like, "Oh my, really?" So, because what happened was he he stands behind you, he opens his heart, and he literally just pushes his energy through you. You receive all of that, and it's just oh, it's it's undescribable. Oh and then when you finish, basically, when I went to lie down, um, and I opened my eyes, he was literally there. You know, I, was, I opened my eyes, and I was like, "Oh my god, Doctor Joe!" And uh, yeah, he just gave me the biggest cuddle, and uh, uh, he sort of he stroked my beard, and and off he went. You know, and he, and he carried on doing his thing with the other people around, and. Um, yeah, it was it was absolutely life changing to not just be there, but have that intimate moment, right. sharing his energy um, as support. You know, so yeah, it was, it was phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. I definitely got to get on one of these trips. I'm a huge fan of Joe, Doctor Joe. Read Becoming Supernatural three times, breaking the habit of being yourself, the placebo effect, and you know the science yeah, yeah. behind it is so oh, it's, like that, you know, that's now. that's what i love about him the most is he as men again we we want to understand something if someone tells us something we're like yeah okay but i want to see the proof why you're saying that and, and show me show me the results you know and he he brings that science like you say he he combines yeah. all of that and yeah so i i really connected with his work and and the same same as he just said i you know i've read his books multiple times um i do his meditations daily um i i sort of flip through them um i, I do the blessings of the energy centers i start right back at number one and i work my way through to the top um i do the walking meditation still you know um at, at time space is fantastic i love that one mm -hmm. so yeah it's uh it's, it's it's a big part of my oh my, my healing process and even still today we could talk about this forever forever and i <laughs> i honestly I, I do talk about it a lot my favorite diagram my favorite chapter in the book of becoming supernatural is when he breaks down our body into subatomic particles you know you know we were yeah, yeah, yeah. matter we can touch us but that's because that's because our subatomic particles are just vibrating so fast that that be that they become yeah. solid we're really just you know trillions of cells that make up this body and we're constantly dying and we're constantly being reborn and each cell yeah. has its own conscience right like we can upregulate our proteins and our genes to alter our dna and obviously neuroplasticity is, is proven now we have the ability to create new neurons and new brain cells and we can change the That's way right. we think we can change where we act and then bringing it full circle to spirituality and the quantum fields and the universe and the law of yeah, attraction yeah. and being able to manifest your goals and dreams. I mean, his children, his, his daughter, I mean, there's a, there's a story in becoming supernatural about how she wanted yeah, to she go to Italy or, and her, and her son was there Spain well. or whatever. And then she ended up and he said, look, you have to live as if it's already true because it's not, it's and not the right. thoughts. It's the feelings. It's the, you know, you could think, you know, I'm rich, exactly. I'm rich, I'm rich. But if you feel rich, like you genuinely in your entire body, you feel wealthy, you feel abundant, like there is no scarcity or lack mindset at all, then the, and he says like this, you can rearrange the furniture in the universe to actually, exactly. actually come true, right? That's it. That's it. Because he says, like I say, you, the, the brain sends the signal out, but it's that emotion that draws that experience to right. you. You know, and, and, and it's so true. And actually in that week, Zach, this brought me to tears. I was literally sitting there sobbing like a baby. There was a woman on stage. He, on all his retreats, he's got people doing testimonials. But this lady, she literally had cancer the size of kiwis in, in her stomach. And she was riddled. And the doctors basically, three different doctors basically said to her, there's nothing we can do for you. All you can do is 
go home and die. That that is it. You know, there there is no hope. Um, and uh, yeah, she she stood on stage. She went to a retreat. And this it's a long story. The, the actual testimonial is on YouTube. And um, yeah, so she told the whole story. But in the end, after the, after the retreat that she was on, she went home and she said to her husband. I know that I'm cured. I know I know that there's no cancer left in me. And uh, they went to get a PET scan. And I think she said they had to scan it twice or three times because they couldn't they believe, believe it. that there wasn't a trace. There was nothing, Zach. Unbelievable. <laughs> and obviously, Dr. Joe has his story as well. I mean, y'all, all, he's the testimonial. The guy got hit by a truck in 1986 Absolutely. on his bike, was paralyzed. Yeah, from, yeah, I think yeah. The neck, correct me if anything I say is uh, is inaccurate. Paralyzed yeah, no, he had to have a Harrington rod operation. Yeah. yeah, every doctor he saw said, hey, look, you are going to have to get spinal surgery or you're never going to walk again. He said, you know what, That's I'm going to meditate. Yeah. And he was able to, I don't even know how to eloquently articulate my thoughts in this story, but like use his conscience energy, like use his like mental attention and his consciousness to That's build it. back his spine vertebrae yeah. by yeah, vertebrae yeah, yeah. by vertebrae, six months full recovery, no pain. I mean, come on. That's exactly, come yeah. On. But yeah. I think he said, you know, I think he said he um, he did it in 12 weeks. <laughs> that uh, 12 weeks. From, from where he couldn't literally get up until he walked. And they, they were like, it's, it's a miracle. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, and and, and <laughs> when we really dive deep into all these things about neuroplasticity and Joe's story and this woman's story of the, of the cancer the size of kiwis, you know, there's something else there. And I don't know if you want to call it God. I don't know what you want to call it, but science can only explain so much, right? We really, let's say we break it down. We have a heart and it's tissue and it's uh, cells and it's or molecules and cells, atoms. And we break down subatomic particles and it's a small, small thing. It's energy, right? But why? So what do you think is the missing ingredient? Do you think it's God? What do you think it is? <laughs> Do you know what, Zach? This, that's, a, that's a million dollar question that, you know, because everyone will have their own belief that they they can add to the pot, basically. But I, I believe it's consciousness, mate. It's, it's the subconscious and the consciousness that, that combines that if, I mean, that, that, that is my understanding of it and that's my belief of it. Um, I mean, he's, even his work, he, he's, he's been in churches where he's, told like in the beginning when he started started out he was talking in church with uh, with the pastors and they, they gave him time to talk to the the community basically and and, and tell his story and, and tell, tell them about meditation and stuff so there is a there is a higher power but i think it's it's the consciousness of everything that is that god that energy right. that power right. you know that that is the creation of everything right. it's it's it is consciousness you know it's it, the moment the, the the exact moment after moment after moment after moment just being in that moment the whole time that right. is where you get that everything, uh -huh. everything comes from there that god is that consciousness that consciousness is god we are conscious we are god we are able to yeah, absolutely. change things in the universe, make things happen. We are in control of our thoughts. We're in control of what happens to us. Do you, let me ask this, when it comes to knowing that, what you just said about how, how you believe it's consciousness, and I, I agree 100%. I'm, I, am, I am right behind you, man. I'm, I'm an inch behind you. <laughs> let me ask you this. Knowing that, knowing that, how do you apply that to your life? Like, What do you do differently or what are you intentional about knowing that consciousness is that higher power do you know what for me zach if i do it in very layman's terms right as a young boy i now bear in mind i since the age of 23 24 i have never worked for a boss i have always basically worked for myself and i have done so many different things in my life from working on building sites to having property, renting property out, having my own construction firm with 80 guys acting. working for me, you know, acting, everything. Yeah. But as a kid, when I was, 
as far back as I can remember. I wanted to be a stuntman, and one of the main things I wanted to do was be in a cigarette commercial, like those old cowboys that come on the horse and they, they open like the, the packet of Gunston and they smoke it and they, they, they gallop off in the sunset. Now, because I grew up on a farm with horses and stuff, that was my, I, I always, that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to be that guy in the commercial. And although I didn't do that specific kind of commercial or advert or whatever you want to call it, I ended up doing that because as a child, I believed that that's what I'm going to do. And subconsciously, that did come true. Right. I, I did end up, and I've been doing that for God, nearly 17, 18 years now um, on top of other stuff. But that's my main thing that I do, that I, I act and I do commercials and stuff. Um, but I've, I've, And that's the main thing that I do. And I'm very blessed. You know, I've got a massive, massive contract with uh, the Czech Republic and Slovakia that I'm the face of their lottery. I do everything in their, in their sort of lottery from commercials to uh, their social media advertisement to billboards, the whole lot. Um, and that comes from my childhood that I believed that's what I'm going to be. That's who I'm going to become. And that's what I'm going to do. And it came to fruition 30 years down the line. But here I am living proof of that. And it was literally just a thought that I had. Right. I saw that on telly. I was like, oh, my word, that is what I want to do. I love that. And I felt that. And I was like, yes, that, that is my calling in, in, in a way, you yeah. know. But like I say, I've done loads of other stuff. Uh -huh. um, but in the end, here I am. And I'm, I mean, I, I, uh, people think that I live the life of Riley because I literally, I don't work. I, I go out on adventures into the mountains. I, I make content for social media. I spread positivity. Um, and my work, when I do go on shoots and stuff, is I, I don't see that as work, mate. Yeah. I see that as just uh, something that I love to do. Amazing. And I get paid for it. And it's like, thank you very much. You know, it's brilliant. I absolutely, I love so it. I love my you, life. It's, you it's basically just fabulous now. manifested your lifestyle from an early age. And that was before you even knew who Dr. Joe was, before you had a meditation 100%. practice, before you were ultra and hyper present and aware of your thoughts, feelings, and actions. But let me ask the question yeah. again, though. What are you intentional about today? Like, you, you know, in your bio, you say you're traveling the path of healing. And healing is a, a forever yeah. thing. Obviously, we're never healed. Uh, like, that's not a thing. We're healing. We're always, you agree with that? Yeah, 100%. Right, 100%. We're always healing. We're never healed because we're constantly healing. But what is something along your path of healing that is either the most important or has made the biggest difference along your journey? So for me, the, I, I feel that the biggest thing that I want to do is just help one other person. If there's one other person out there that I can lift up and inspire or just give them a little glimmer of hope, for me, that is my job done. You know, I don't need to help the whole world. If I can, oh my God, I'd be so grateful and it'll be fantastic. However, if I can just help one person out there, like I say, that for me is the ultimate goal. You know, and, yeah. and I've, I feel like I've done that. I've had so many messages. Absolutely. I've had so many people being grateful just in comments on posts and stuff saying that you've basically saved my life by just saying this. You've, you've picked me up. You've helped me. Um, you know, that, that in itself, for me, it's such a relief of or release of serotonin um, and feel good and just explosion of love coming from here out inside, inside out that just makes every day worthwhile you know mm -hmm. and then of course i've got my kids um i've got my two sons and i've got my daughter who's uh who's only a baby still she's only five she's six and, and six in april um i spend a lot of time with her you know um and yeah i i take her on adventures um we go and climb mountains together i take her to go and see waterfalls and yeah she she just loves life you Amazing. know so that. that's uh, that's the goal is to make uh, to help them see life through my eyes. Yep. Amazing. Johan, I want to thank you so much for your time today. It's, it's really been a pleasure connecting with you and having this conversation. And, you know, we're definitely going to 
have a relationship in the future because we got a lot in common. You can teach me so much. You can show me so much. And uh, I'm a really good listener. I love listening. I love learning. Um, to all the people that are listening on Apple or Spotify, thank you so much. Go ahead and check out Johan on Instagram at man from somewhere. Um, I'll also, if actually, if you're listening on YouTube, you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for sticking around until the end. I'm going to drop all the links to Johan's website, his merch, his Patreon, and all the stuff more below. Johan, I want to thank you again. Is there anything you want to leave the audience with today before we wrap up? No, I'm, do you know what, Zach? At the end of the day, is just keep shining, brother. You know, and, and everyone out there, whatever you're going through, you know, if you look back, you have overcome 100% of the shit you've gone through. So don't worry about what's, what's happening tomorrow. Just live in the moment now oh. and um, keep shining, mate. Love That's it. it. Johan, thank you. I'll see you soon. Have a great <laughs> thank day. Thank you so much, Zach. I appreciate it.